Hey everyone, welcome back to Rhythm Railroad. Uh, this is the first video of many to come on my signaling project. Um, I decided to dive into this project because um, I had all my block detection set up. I have um, basically all my wiring uh, working very well and I have JMRI working nicely as well. Um, and I uh, think it would just make things a lot uh, more fun and a lot more interesting if I got into signals um, for my layout. So this video is basically just the first level basic uh, testing of the board and uh, how things work. Uh, I'm not gonna get into anything to do with the layout necessarily today. Um, if you're new at this like I am, uh, there might be some things on this video that might help you um, because you know, some, th some people that are more involved in this and more um, experienced with this might see very simple things um, not as important as, as, you know, people that are just getting into it. Um, for example, some good things happened as I was setting this up and one really bad thing happened, which I thought was going to ruin the whole project. But uh, I think I came out of it unscathed, hopefully. Uh, we'll see in the future. But uh, I'll get to that in, in one second. Um, what I wanted to do today was show you the initial setup. So getting power to the board, testing out the, the, the mast, um, and then just how things kind of switch around with the lights and everything. So here's what you're going to need for that. Um, obviously, your instruction manual. Uh, you're going to need the SC8C board with the connector, which is this blue thing here. You're going to need some wire and a power source, which could be uh, any power source, as long as it has 12 volts DC, uh, AC rather, to 15 volts DC. I'm going with a 12 volt DC, 12 volt AC, sorry. Um, then you're gonna need obviously the uh, provided ribbon cable with the clips that are already set up for you. And then this is the testing signal mast, uh, which is a 10 pin mast with two heads. Uh, three lights on each one. The top light of each one is green, the middle light of each one is yellow, and then obviously the bottom light of each one is, is uh, red. Now, I'm trying to, I'm actually under my layout right now because I'm trying to get the phone that I'm recording with to pick up the actual color of the light, and I'm having trouble because the phone wants to just, I don't know, put more light in, into the screen and it's making everything look, just look white. So, um, I'll do my best to keep that you know, accurate. Uh, the last thing you're going to need besides the throttle is some kind of Loganet system that's working, meaning a live Loganet system. And as you can see, I have a cable hooked up to my Loganet jack right there. That's then going up into my layout Loganet um, uh, right above here. Okay, so here's what I did. The first thing I did was I, I got power to the board. Now here's how I did it. I went out to my electronics store and I got one of these um, screw terminal adapters where, you know, if you split them, you have, a, you have a female and you have a male. And obviously the screw terminals are on both. These are really neat because um, you can just, you know, once you, you are done soldering, you can just take the other end and just screw it in. Rather than having to twist the wires onto the power source uh, or have to cut the, the power source uh, plug to then split the wires and strip them and then set them up. All that stuff goes away with these little clips. So um, here's the connection right here from, this is the power source and there's your plug and it just goes right in. And from there, I just took my blue and my white and I just went out to the board. Now, it does specify on these wires what plus and minus is. Um, I don't know if you can see it there, but it apparently doesn't matter because once the power gets to the board, I think the board kind of figures it out. Again, I'm not an electrician or, or I'm not, I don't know anything about, you know, how, how these things work necessarily. So, you know, you, some of you might be looking at this saying, well, of course it flips it over. It's got this thing over here and it's, it, it does it. Uh, so I don't know, uh, but it seems to not matter. 
Uh, the instructions don't don't specify. They just say to plug one wire into um, pin number three. So that would be one, two, three. So right now I have my blue wire running to that pin. And then under them are the same sets of pins, but just right under the other ones. And those would be called A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. So it's pin three on top and pin C on the bottom. So that's where my white wire is. Now, I don't think that matters either. You could call the top ones A, B, C, and the bottom ones one, two, three. It doesn't matter as long as you get one wire to each. Now, here's where I really goofed up. Um, as you can see right now, everything's working. So yeah, I got the, the green light, which is indicating that there's power correctly going to the, you know, to the uh, board. And then I have a red light, which blinks once in a while. Um, but especially if you do something on the, on the uh, throttle, for example, if I press switch, you'll see that it, it, uh, it's showing you that it's actually connected and that there's something going on. Um, so the, what happened to me was that when I put the, uh, you know, once I finished soldering the wires to the third pin and pin C, I was an idiot and I didn't look at the orientation of how that blue connector is supposed to be connected. So obviously there's a 50-50 chance of messing this up and I went with the 50% that messed it up. So what I did is I connected the whole thing that way. So in reality, instead of being connected to pin three and C, I was connected somewhere down here um, on the opposite end. I don't even know how many pins there are here. But um, the minute I put power to the board, I saw, I saw poof, white smoke coming out of here, like one little puff. And I immediately unplugged it, thank goodness. Um, then I gave up and I said, well, that's the end of that. I guess I burned my board out and there goes a hundred bucks. Uh, but I was obviously wrong because it is working right now. And I did go through all the tests for the mass, at least for the, for the first driver. And it seems to be okay. Now, maybe along the line here, uh, I'll be, I'll find, you know, where that smoke came from because something won't work. But as, as of right now, things are fine. Uh, I'm just praying that nothing worse happened than what I saw. Um, so yeah, be really careful. Those of you who are, you know, uh, new like me. And, and if you're a little silly like me, um, be careful how you're putting the, the board, the connector in because it matters, obviously. Um, if you, if I would have looked at the first page and oriented the uh, the board the same way, if I would have done this, for example, I would have known, oh, look, the third pin is on the bottom here, not on the top. But I didn't do that because I, I was just excited to get this thing going and, you know, mistakes like that, I guess are going to happen here and there. Um, but anyways, enough of that. It is working. So let's get on with this project. Um, so once you have the signal mass hooked up to the first driver, which is this one here, uh, and you can see the other drivers are like right here, there, 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 there. There's eight of them total. Uh, then what you're gonna have to, to do is figure out um, how are you going to plug in your test mast. Now, why does that matter? Well, because if you plug in the test mast this way with the brown wire on your right side as you're facing it, uh, what's gonna happen is you're going to be testing it as a as an AB mast, which they explain on the manual. Um, where is that good picture of that? Right here on page five. Uh, so as you can see, the the single track part of the turnout is considered your main, obviously, uh, and that's A1 and 2 because that's uh, signaling whether you're going to keep going on the main, which is A1, or whether you're going you're gonna to be taking the diverging route, which is A2. Um, then the opposite direction would be your B for your main going that way and your C for your main going this way. So again, A1 and 2 are for this direction, and B and C are for that direction. So when you when you first hook this up, they ask you to hook it up this way. 
so you know what you're looking at. Um, then there's a whole chart of what each driver does. So right now we're looking at just driver one right there. This is page seven, by the way. And it's telling me that A1 right here, A1 main, these are the switch addresses right up to there, 257 and 258 for the top head. And whether they're thrown or closed, we'll, we'll get you these, these lights. And then A2 for the diverging uses 259 and 260. And whether you're throwing or closing will dictate what color those are going to get on the bottom head. So these are for the top head of the mast and these are for the bottom head of the mast. And it's only going up to, I don't know if you can see it there, but there's like a darker gray here and like white. It's only using this block right here. We're only talking about this material here. This is the B and the C. So these codes would be from for when you flip the mast the other way. So now when you flip the mast the other way, your pins are completely reversed in orientation, which is sending the signal from the board to the pins backwards. Um, so that's how you get these results uh, that are listed here. And obviously each driver is going to have the same thing, except the addresses are changing, as you can see, because you need, you know, the, the board needs to dictate what to do with each one and what setting you're in. So uh, right now we're just focusing on the first driver, and that's the way it's set up. Um, so what it, it tells you to do is to use your throttle to kind of test it out. Um, so if you press switch and then the address, uh, you're selecting which, which uh, head you're going to be accessing. So um, the default, when you plug it in, is just red and red, meaning the bottom, the bottom lights of each head are going to be red. Um, and again, sorry about the lighting here. but So when I select the first code, which is 257, the first address, I should say, what I need to do is I need to hit switch and then two, five, seven, which was already there anyway. But uh, then the C and the T is close and throw. That's when you're gonna get some kind of a response from the light. So right now it's set up for close. That's why it's flashing the C. So when I push the T, watch what happens here. So actually what I did is I pressed T, it didn't do anything, and I pressed C, and it turned green on top. So let's see if that matches up. So here's code 257. In order for the green to uh, be activated, it has to be closed. And that's why it says 257 closed, and that's why it's green on top right now. Um, if, if that makes sense to you, then you're on the right track. Uh, it took me a while to kind of mentally decipher this and get comfortable with how all these numbers work and and the throwing and the closing but it, it you know it's fairly simple uh once you get the hang of it um i think what happened initially is that when you when you first hook this up it's not talking to the throttle necessarily until you go back and forth a few times so i'm going to go back and forth between throw and close and you watch what happens here so here's throw here's close throw close throw close so so basically, once it adheres the signal the first time, I think it, then, then it's fine. Okay, so moving on to the next address. So this next address is going to give you, still on A1, which is the top head. But now it's going to tell you how to get the yellow and the flashing yellow. Now, don't ask me why it's in this order, but it's the way Digitrack set it up. So now we're going to go to address 258, which is going to, once again, control the top head but it's going to make these two things happen, the yellow and the flashing yellow. So let's go back to the throttle. You're going to hit switch. You're going to dial in two, five, eight. And right now it's closed, but nothing has happened yet because we haven't done anything uh, with the throttle here yet. So let's just go back and forth. So this is thrown. As you can see, the middle went yellow a solid yellow and then if I that's thrown if I go to closed now 
and I got a flashing yellow on top. And once again, yes, it does line up with what it says here. Closed, address 258 will give me a flashing yellow on the first driver and on the top head. Now we're gonna to move to the second head. So you don't, need to, you don't need to reverse the orientation of the mast because you're talking about the same situation here. Okay, so A2 is just the bottom head that you're going to control now. So we're going to go address 259, which gives you these two options, red and green, but now on the bottom head. So here's 259. Let's see, switch. 259. Okay, now it's still doing the last thing that I asked it to do, even though it's showing closed there. But let's see what happens when I go back and forth. So now here's thrown. And here's closed. So you see, it took it took one round of me pushing the buttons for it to react. So now the bottom is green, and the top hasn't changed at all because that address is still there. I haven't I haven't touched it. Okay. So once I uh, go back to throw, it goes back to red, and see now I can go back and forth as I please. So I'm going to leave it on green, so you can see the difference there, which is 259 closed. For the bottom head so let's let's match that so here's the bottom head here's 259 and here's closed and closed gets us green that's why it's green so so far we're doing great all right um now 259 sorry 260 now is going to once again use the bottom head here but the 260 uh, input is going to get us the yellow and the flashing yellow uh, similar to what we had on the on the top light okay so we're going to go 260 throw and closed so let's go back to here switch 260 and I guess you're going you're to get that C but watch what happens when I go back and forth to the bottom head see now I got the flashing yellow or if I throw it I got the solid yellow so you can see it says T for thrown, and I get a solid yellow on the bottom. Let's see if that lines up. Here's my uh, bottom head. Here's my 260 address, and the T for thrown, um, which should get me the solid yellow, as you see it there on the bottom head. All right, so that's basically all the commands that are available for the top and bottom heads in this orientation. Now, the next thing is, if I take that mast and flip it so that the lights are facing the opposite direction, like I said before, now all the pins are going to be reversed according to the wiring, and so the signals that are being sent out here are exactly backwards, uh, which give me these results with these addresses. Uh, just so you know, I've tried entering, uh, for example, in, in this orientation, entering 261 or 262, 263, 264, it does not work until you flip it around. So the board knows which, which way this thing is, is going. It's not like you're going to get some, some false readouts or something like that. So let's do that now. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Actually, I'm going to put this down and come okay, back. Okay, so now we're back. I flipped the mast around um, and now as you can see it went to the default which is red on the bottom red on the bottom um, now here's the thing before I continue I left the other orientation with a blinking fla blinking yellow on top and a solid yellow in the middle uh, on the bottom rather um, just so you can see that when I go back it should recall like uh, the memory will will hold on to that address and that and those changes i think until we turn this off if we turn this off it'll it'll reset but since this is the first time i'm, I'm flipping this around now um since the last time i powered this up uh, i think that's why it's in that um default setting of red and red now now we're dealing with your b main and your c siding um orientations right b and c orientation uh, which is what I showed you in the address. So if you can imagine the main coming this way and then splitting in the turnout, 
um, that's what this was. Now we're going in this direction with the split already there and joining the middle, um, the middle uh, the track, the main track. So let's try these addresses. Um, we have 261, thrown, should get us the red, and 261 closed, should get us the green. One thing that I did notice is that um, these seem to be treated as single head signals, meaning instead of like having two sets of two heads on each mast, they only have one one head. So it would be similar to what that would look like if I just covered that. So, uh, and if you look at the instructions once again, uh, this diagram shows exactly that uh, that the A um, signal has two heads. Obviously, because you have two routes coming, but the B and the C have only one head because it's it's joining the one line. So that's only one head is necessary in this in this kind of approach. Uh, uh, you know, there's different kind of signaling out there, but that's what I'm going with. So with that said, when I tested this the last time, what I noticed was that uh, the B, which you would probably imagine, would be the top head of the double head mass when you test it. Uh, it's actually the opposite. So the B is only going to control that bottom head. And let's see if that's true. So we're looking at um, B, which is for the main. Uh, we're looking at, obviously, like I told you, the bottom head right now. And 261 should give us the red and the green. So let's, let's enter that. Switch. 261. And we're gonna throw on close. Let's see what happens to the head, bottom head. Hopefully, there it is. So closed is your green, and thrown is your red. So let's see if that works. I'll leave it on green. Close is green. So two six one. Bottom head for the main is closed, and that is your green. Perfect. Next one would be I'm assuming your top head. And that's why I left this on green, so you can see the, the, the difference. Um, so 263 is what we're looking at right now. So switch. Sorry. Uh, switch. 263. And now open, uh, thrown and closed, which should give us top results. There it is. And obviously, once you go into the next set of codes the 262 and 264, that's gonna give you your yellows. So it's gonna be a yellow uh, for thrown and a flashing yellow for closed. So let's just go with the flashing yellow, let's say for the C, the siding, which would be the top head. So now we're looking at 264 closed for that top head to start flashing. So 264, And we want closed, and there it is. Thrown is solid yellow, and closed is blinking. Now I'm gonna leave it like this so you can see what happens when I when I flip these around, uh, how it retains, uh, you know, the the uh, the other uh, signals. So once again, I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. If I can do it, there it is. So remember, I had flashing yellow and solid yellow on the other orientation. And as you can see, that's exactly right. And then if I take that out and I flip it again, it should retain the green and the flashing yellow. There it is. So everything is working according to the manual and according to the addresses. The only thing would be now that if I take this driver and I would uh, try the, the cord and put it into another driver. Uh, so if I, the way I've, I've uh, uh, the way I've figured it out is that this is driver one, this is two, three, four. So if I plug it into any one of those and go according to address here, it'll it'll give me those results. Um, I thought. First, that this was um, set up this way one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I, I plugged it into that one 
and I, which would be seven in my head. Um, and when I tried to put the seven commands in, the 305, 307, it wouldn't do anything. So I knew that that, that was the wrong driver sequence. So once I, once I went to four and I plugged those numbers in, it worked. Okay. So listen, everything is, uh, is a little bit harder first to, to just kind of like um, digest. But once you do it, it, it all makes sense. Um, the only thing that, that tricked me up a little bit was that uh, this is bottom head for the B main and this is top head. But it doesn't matter because once you wire it, uh, it's all good. Uh, so this is going to be the end of video one, which is just testing out the system, making sure that it works as far as the board and the test masks. So now I know that I can plug this into my layout and I won't have to worry about anything here not functioning. Not yet anyway, except for that smoke that came out. So if I see, if I see something go wrong, it's probably that. But uh, it looks like it might be okay because since I'm using JMRI and the computer... I think the computer is just looking at um, this. It doesn't. It's not worried about you know resistors on, on on the other stuff and whatever I might have burned out. So I might be in the clear here. Um, so the next video, and I'm already kind of ahead of myself a little bit, is um, going to be based around plugging your own signals in, and I've gotten these adapters which are called the TSMKs, Terminal Strip Mounting Kit. Um, that's what that stands for. And what happens here is that you can make um, your own signals or buy signals that are already pre-wired and then uh, plug them into that as like a breakout board. So I'll show you what I did here. Here's the signal I made and the wire coming out of it. And then you just uh, plug them in. Um, but I haven't tested them yet, so that'll be the next video. So I guess my, that's uh, that's gonna be my teaser, my uh, video tease for for the next one. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on video two.